players that maybe we thought were going to do a little bit better at the next level and didn't. I think I think it's a really interesting conversation. Like as as college fans, um, you you watch a guy play and you're like, that guy can't miss. He really can't miss at the next level, and then it doesn't always turn out that way. So yeah, it could, it, this should be fun. Yeah. So kind of our main topic, you were sort of leading into it there, but our main topic is players that we were wrong about. And this is kind of open-ended. I think um, probably the easiest one to talk about are, are the ones that like college players that we expected to hit or to not be good in, in the NFL and, and where we were wrong on those. I also went with a few players that I thought would be different in college one way or another than they ended up being. Um, Ashton, like, I guess you, you were talking, you were telling me you kind of went mostly with like players that you expected to um, translate the NFL. Um, is that kind of where you went with it most, mostly? Yeah, yeah, it is. Like the, the list I made wasn't, and not just super extensive, just players that that felt like home runs and mm-hmm. like watching them play in college. It's like like that's an NFL guy. Like there's a there's no chance he doesn't work out. Right. And then you see him get to the next level. Like he gets drafted, he gets on an NFL team, and it, and and it's either he, he's just a little slower than what you thought, or like. Yeah, maybe like the 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 hunger is not there anymore. Like I don't yeah. know, I don't know what it is. Like I think it's different things for for everyone. And I I mean the most famous one is is going to be Johnny Manziel, right? Like like the guy that was I mean he's a high spin winner, right? Like that you and he had a really good arm and he was drafted very high and then he yeah made the NFL and, and didn't even really seem like he cared anymore at that point. So mm-hmm. yeah, that that was kind of kind of where I kind of went with the list. Yeah, I, I guess to kind of preface everything, I'll, I'll say that we we tend to rag a lot on NFL GMs and and the mock sure. draft experts and all all of that, and probably for good reason. Like I think I do think that as college fans that pay attention, we do we are able to see some of those in, inconsistencies in, in what they what they do. That being said, like we are also wrong um, from time to time, and so like this is just kind of our own accountability i guess of uh, where have we been wrong you mentioned johnny manzel was that a guy that you expected to pan out in the nfl uh, maybe maybe i mean because like you see him go up against really good defenses in in college and and by the way i do want to say like it wasn't that he physically couldn't do it in the nfl it, it i mean he, yeah he had a lot of off the field stuff which by the i mean yeah that's it's, it's still the same thing like he was still a bust but mm-hmm. like it wasn't that he suddenly got slower or suddenly couldn't make the throw anymore. He just like, he clearly wasn't studying as much. And like Jamarcus Russell, like remember like way back the old LSU quarterback uh, yeah. that got drafted by Oakland. Cause he could throw the ball. Kind of like Joe Milton. I think Jamarcus Russell was the first Joe Milton. Like he could, he could throw a football like 110 <laughs> yards and kind of do whatever he needed to do. And then, yeah, he like never even read his playbook. It turned out. So yeah, stuff like that. I One name that I just, it keeps coming back. This is probably the most, memorable for me is Trent Richardson, the running back yes. out of Alabama. Uh, that guy, when in college, he he was a can't miss prospect. Not not mm-hmm. only was he faster, but he was also like so big and strong. Uh, like at and and to be able to move that fast at that size was like there's of course he's like that's a sure fire. Like there's no way that he mm-hmm. misses in the NFL. And yeah, like of all the Alabama running backs, like there's a lot of Bama running backs that have had success. He was like one of the few that didn't, which was very surprising to me. Yeah, he's definitely on my list too. Mm-hmm. I I think I probably had as much faith in him as far as Alabama yeah. running backs as I did any of all of the great running backs that have come, right. come through Alabama. I just thought that he was just different, like the way he moved some of his jump cuts and, and was just an yeah. absolute beast in college and goes to the NFL and it was like, he was a completely different player. Um, zero yeah. vision at all. Um, yeah, that was a shock to me for sure. Um, I have a couple Notre Dame players on my list just because obviously you pay attention closer to the school that you follow. Did you have any Georgia players that stood out to you as, is like, man, you really thought this guy would be better in the NFL. Well, I had, yeah, well, like, there was one, I, I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't think that Nick Chubb would do well at the NFL level. Oh, okay. I, um, Nick, Nick Chubb Son- and Sonny Michelle, um, they came, they, they came into college in the same class, and they stayed like for the full four years, right? And so they both got drafted the same year. And it was commonly thought that like, well, okay, Chubb's a little bit better of a college runner, but Michelle with like his hands and with the way the NFL is going, he's a better pass catcher, a little bit quicker, shiftier. He's going to be the better NFL back 
whereas Chubb will be just kind of slow. Um, and it turns out like Chubb can absolutely fly. Like he can absolutely <laughs> fly. And, and so Nick Chubb has, I mean, he's one of the best running backs in the NFL. I think he's the rushing leader a couple of times. So like, yeah. And, and Michelle not had a bad career, but like, he's, he's not, yeah, nowhere close to Chubb. And like, that was interesting for me. I, I was just wrong. Like I, I just missed on that one, which is, uh, yeah, it definitely watching them play. It always seemed that way. Like Michelle's the more polished NFL back and that just wasn't true. Sure. So for I talked about Notre Dame players. The one, the one that I was probably the most wrong about was Jimmy Clausen, um, the quarterback who his junior year at Notre Dame. I think he threw twenty six touchdowns to four interceptions, and at least two of his interceptions like were completely the receiver's fault. Like he was just the most accurate quarterback I had ever seen to that point, and go and goes to the NFL and was just terrible from day one. Was on the Panthers. Yeah. Started for most of his rookie year, and they didn't uh, did absolutely nothing. And the next year, they drafted Cam Newton, and and before long, he was out of the league. Um, I expected yeah. his accuracy to be kind of a calling card, where he would at least be a good NFL quarterback. Um, but he he didn't really have great leadership skills. Um, didn't didn't have a good frame. Um, couldn't really move in the pocket well, and yeah, it was just a complete bust. Um, second mm. round pick, so it's not like he was expected to be some great player, but I personally expected him to to pan out, and he did not. Um, yes. I don't even know, like, how much do you even remember of him? <laughs> you probably don't really. Very little, yeah, very little. I remember, I just a, a yeah, a few few things about him, but yeah, not much. Sure. There's the the whole thing of of. And I think it's a little, maybe a little bit unfair to some of these players that leave college when they do go to the NFL. I think a lot of it has to do with the system that they go into, especially with like sure. quarterbacks and even receivers. You can say that that there are some offenses. Okay, like Brock Purdy goes to the to the Niners, right? He gets in the Shanahan offense. He looks fantastic, right? He looks really, really good. Now. Part of it's him being good, but part of it is the system is very, very helpful to right. him. Like they, these, like he's, yeah, he's very much making the easy reads, and it's it's there for him. You can tell like he's very well coached. He's very comfortable um, in that system. Whereas, yeah, like some of the Jaguars quarterbacks they took, like they, I think they took like Blaine Gabbert, like Blaine, yeah, yeah, and, and not that he was great, but like he didn't have a chance. Like he's going to the Jaguars, who weren't really great anyway. Like, yeah, all, all the Browns quarterbacks, like over the years, oh. that, like they go through, there's so many. And like you, like they, these quarterbacks, maybe they're not even that bad. They just don't have a chance. Like they don't really yeah. have a shot. Like, yeah, with, with the coaching that's there. And I, I think it's with receivers too. Um, yeah, there's like, you remember John Ross, like I, he still holds the record for the best 40 time with the Bengals. He could have been used better. Like, I'm not saying like, sure. They got too enamored with his 40 time, like, I understand that, but he could have been used more creatively. Like he was sure. like five years too early to where like they weren't running the jet sweeps and the quick screens as much, you know, like, and if he say he got in his, like an, an Andy Reed system or a Shanahan system, like, I think he'd be used better. I do. So yeah, so some of it's a little unfair um, just to like, just kind of the system. And yeah, there's certain mm-hmm. organizations and we all know them uh, <laughs> that just don't <laughs> develop like the Detroit lions. Uh, yeah. There's it's, that's just kind of how it is. Yeah. Another quarterback that I really expected to be great in the NFL, and he he was very good as a rookie. And then you could say it was mostly injuries, but still I expected more out, more out of this guy was Robert Griffin III. Um, loved the way he played at Baylor, threw a beautiful deep ball, um, came to the NFL, and actually I believe led the Redskins to the, to the playoffs as a rookie. And I, I think he even was like setting records as a rookie for – um, I forget, was it passer rating by a rookie or something like that? Um, but was, was very good, had, had an injury and never really was able to get it back. Um, but I, I felt, I thought that his arm would be able to compensate for the, the kind of knee injury he had, but it seemed like when he lost his, his athleticism, um, he just wasn't able to do it. And so that, that to me was a shock. Um, hmm. yeah. There's. The, the quarterbacks alone, like this whole list, we could go only yeah. on quarterbacks. Like there's, there's most so of mine are quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going. And then, uh, then I'll, I'll pop in with some. Yeah. So my next three are actually receivers. Okay. And 
Two of them, it's a little unfair because they were both solid. The one is still in the league. Um, mm. Both of these guys had th- had a thousand yard season in the NFL. Um, Michael Floyd and Sammy Watkins. So Michael Floyd from Notre Dame, Sammy Watkins from Clemson. Watkins yeah. still in the league. Um, and Floyd, yeah. like like I mentioned, had a thousand yard season. Watkins yeah. had a thousand yard season and has been solid. I expected both of them to be like legit number one receivers. Um, just the way they played in college, they both were explosive. I thought in college, um, I think they were both faster in college than than what they ended up being. Um, and then the third the third receiver on my list is Corey Coleman from from Baylor. I think that was probably the system, but he was great in college, just incredible. Won the Bletnikoff and has basically did absolutely nothing in the NFL. <laughs> the uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say that that's unfair to some of those guys. Okay, Watkins has had a, a nice career. Yeah, he like, has. Like, and yeah, he's not been the the. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, he's had a nice I career. I would have expected him to have a a career more like DeAndre Hopkins had uh, for another Clemson receiver. Like to me, I, my, in my yeah. mind, I would have expected their careers to be switched in the NFL. Hmm. But um, I'm going to throw this one out here. Um, let's go with. Jake Locker, you remember the, the oh, Washington yeah. quarterback? Mm-hmm. Um, there was one year I think he was going to go number one overall. He decides to co- to return to college for one for his senior year, I guess. And yeah, n- never gets never gets back to it. Never, never. Yeah, I think he got drafted like I don't know in the ten to fifteen range, and he never really worked out. Like it was, yeah. It he had the a spiral that could dent titanium. I think was the <laughs> Sports Illustrated article, and um, yeah, never really worked out for him. He went to the Titans and like, that's one of those franchises, man. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's not really, they're not well known for that. So like developing is not really their thing, at least not quarterbacks. I was actually not surprised by him being a bust. He, he lost to the worst defense in Notre Dame history. So I actually watched him yeah. um, in college. Same, same with uh, Mark Sanchez. I don't think he lost, but he got mm. intercepted twice by one of the worst defenses in Notre Dame history. And both of those guys were, players that I did not expect to be good. And that was just based on my own tiny little sample size of watching them. So yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't actually have great reasoning probably for thinking they would be busts. I just wasn't surprised. And I guess I got lucky on those for my own personal evaluation. Um, so, okay. I thought that Reggie Bush would have, would have been a yeah. better NFL back. And Same. like, it's this, it's kind of the thing where, maybe if he was a couple of years later, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of like if he was in a more modern offense, it might work. CJ Spiller, another one, kind of mm-hmm. the same vein, um, super quick, shifty, good pass catchers. Spiller and Bush never really did that much like in at the, at the pro level, but they were so dynamic in college. It was, yeah, it seemed like it was a product of being in a bad system potentially because those guys had all the talent in the world or, or, or was it, or, or was maybe they were just a little bit gimmicky in college. You know what I mean? Like, like maybe it wasn't just a bad system. Maybe they, maybe they were in some fairly gimmicky offenses. Right. I think, and I think they both did a lot because of their pure speed and athleticism. And hmm. when they got to the NFL, they didn't have that huge edge over defenses the way they had in college just based on pure speed and and shiftiness Hmm. where where kind of the the athlete in the nfl was a little closer to what they were and they couldn't quite couldn't quite adjust tavon austin are we ready to go there um tavon austin i thought was going to be a home run and mainly it's because he had just a fantastic six minute highlight video Mm -hmm. that is still one of the most watched on youtube i he was yeah so great so absolutely fantastic um yeah i think and that's he, kind of the similar vein of of the reggie bush and cj spiller thing where he was just a cheat code in college yeah the, the shiftiness and the speed and then when you get to the nfl and the athletes are a little closer to what you are he didn't have another thing to use really to to, to adjust for it what about and and i won't really i won't really call this one a bust as much but someone that you saw get nicked up by injuries and never got back to where they should have been or where they could have been. My mind goes to Todd Gurley, like Todd Mm -hmm. Gurley with the Rams was going to be 
Like, I mean, he already was, he was the best running back in the league for the first, uh, what was it three years with the Rams? And then, yeah, like he has, he, he has some, some, I think it was, I think it was a knee, couple of knee surgeries maybe. And yeah, he cl- clearly was never back. He's, he's obviously not been back to where he was, but that guy, if he doesn't have injuries is, I mean, hall of famer, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he would have that type of career. Whereas now he had a really good four year stretch. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of about it. It like tailed off after that. I, I tend to think that if you get four really good years out of a running back, that's about all you can <laughs> actually plan on. Like, yeah, you could say the same thing about Ezekiel Elliott or, and, and this is where yeah. I'm worried. I'm worried as a Colts fan about Jonathan Taylor, who put up tons of carries in college and has been doing great things in the NFL, but man, like I, how long can that last for running back? It's pretty, it's a pretty rare running back that can really last for, more hmm. than about four to seven years. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think there's just like a shelf life, like just a, a smaller shelf life for like a, an NFL back? Typically. Typically. Yeah. Hmm. Like Arian Foster was that guy for a while, like yeah. for the Texans. You remember, like, if you have fantasy football, you know who Arian Foster is. And yeah, that like, and then it like, it just goes away so quick. I was shocked to see Zeke go downhill so fast yep. like this past year he's not getting any of like the third down touches anymore you know what i mean like he's not he's not the guy that he used to be it was mm-hmm. shocking first time that i really noticed like it was super evident this year mm-hmm. okay my next two guys on my list that i was just absolutely wrong about sticking with the quarterback theme and these guys were in the same draft baker mayfield and josh allen i expected baker mayfield to be really good i expected josh allen to be a st- to be just an absolute bust, <laughs> and, and and as a as rookies, like I was like I felt like I was confirmed in my thinking on that. And then Baker Mayfield completely tanked after his rookie year, and Josh Allen figured out how to be accurate and read defenses. And here we are. So I, as far, as much as anybody on this list, I think those are probably the two that I was the most wrong about. Did you have a bet? I did with your brother. <laughs> did you? Uh, yep. what, and what, what was that one? So we just bet 20 bucks on which quarterback would be better after five years in the NFL. Um, oh, I gotcha. And at the time we made the bet, Allen was going number one in most mock drafts to the Browns. And I expected him to go to the Browns. And I, yeah, right. I, I'll always wonder like if Baker Mayfield had not gone to the Browns, if Josh Allen had gone to the Browns, like how would it have worked out? I don't know. Like obviously that's I'm not going to say that I would have been right. I'm just saying yeah. that it's interesting how that can turn out. Um and it makes you wonder. <laughs> no doubt. The yes, the it's so yeah, I, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what causes that. Like, what causes some franchises just to absolutely destroy young quarterbacks? But there's no doubt. Like, there's graveyards, certain graveyards for quarterbacks. You know what I think is amazing is how like Matthew Stafford stuck at Detroit for that long and mm-hmm. didn't get swallowed up by just the Lions. You know what I mean? Like, there I think there's so many quarterbacks that just get swallowed up, and then yeah, the second Stafford gets out, <laughs> he goes to the Rams and wins the Super Bowl the next year. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. I have one more on my NFL list that I'm not ready to admit yet that I'm wrong, but I'm ready to admit that there's a chance I will be wrong. It's okay. TBD out there. Daniel hmm. Jones. I did not think Daniel Jones would last, frankly, as long as he has. And for yeah. the first three years of his career or whatever, like I, I was not surprised at all by the way he played. I thought that was about what to expect from him. And then last year, with Brian Dable coming in there to the Giants, all of a sudden he looked like a competent quarterback. And yeah. and I have to consider the possibility that I could could end up being wrong on that one. He just signed a really long contract. So he's yeah. going to be around for a while. Yeah. No, I, I'm i not willing to go there yet either. I still mm-hmm. think that you give him two ba- – really just like a really one bad year in New, in New York, I think he'll be out. But, yeah, no, I, I agree. He is, he's surprised. We can say that. He is sure. surprised. Um, yeah, with the Giants, which I think is kind of a, like it's kind of a hard place to do it, you know, like in New York for a young quarterback. So yeah, I, that was one that you're just like, wow, I I really missed on because <laughs> there's no chance that I would have drafted Daniel Jones as a GM. Zero exactly. <laughs> do you have any others that are on your list that you were wrong about? The I I was looking through a couple of them. These are some some guys that I didn't think were going to be good at all. 
and kind of impressed. I did not think that the Bosa's were going to be any good oh. in, in at the NFL level. I, okay, when I say not any good, I didn't think they were going to be at the level that they are now. I thought they would be decent pass rushers, but these guys are fantastic. Like, I mean, they're like really, really good. Um, and they both are. I like, like I was wrong on both. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that was one that just like, yeah, I, I didn't see that trans. I didn't see the 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 rush ability translate. Um, to the NFL as well as it has. So yeah, that was one that I I, I missed for pretty good. Okay, I have the rest of my list is all uh, players I was wrong about in college specifically. Okay. Do you, have, do you have any more on the NFL side before we switch over to college? No, I'm I'm ready to go to college. I I was gonna get. I mean, we can, you can get way into the weeds. I was gonna bring up like guys like I was Vince Young, you know, sure. like Matt Liner back in the day. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a long time ago. That was when I very, first, like 2005, like I just started watching football at that time. Yeah. I, I thought Vince Young was going to be the answer. I really did. He's like, I thought he was Michael Vick with a better arm <laughs> and <laughs> turn, turns out not so much, but yeah, yeah the, like guys like that, it's, um, yeah. Is it a dice roll? Do you think it's just a dice roll really? At quarterback, especially, I would say mostly yes. Like, I do tend to think that it's more common to think a quarterback will be good and then it not turn out that way than yeah. to think that this quarterback sucks and then be proven wrong. Like hmm. I mentioned Josh Allen and maybe Daniel Jones. Like those are the only guys I could really think of that I was like first round quarterbacks who I think are probably overrated and then they actually maybe weren't. Yeah. And Josh Allen is really the only one for sure. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. there's been a number of quarterbacks who went in the first round that I was like, Oh, that guy could be pretty good. And then he's not. Um, but yeah, quarter, quarterback is the toughest one. Who from this year, like, like for this, this, this class here, like we've talked about the five quarterbacks um, at length, right? Like, mm -hmm. so like, and we, we don't really like Le Le Levis or Richardson. And we think that Hendon Hooker's a little underrated. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so maybe like Levis comes out and just lights the world on fire. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, is like, there's a possibility that happens, even though like Hendon Hooker was clearly the better quarterback for two full years at Tennessee. He was clearly the right. better quarterback. And no one will really, really listen to me when I say that. Maybe they, maybe they're seeing things that we're not. And maybe the Colts mm -hmm. will take Richardson or Levis at four. There's a mm -hmm. chance. Yeah, I mean, those are definitely the obvious options for this year because I think we both feel like Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud will be good quarterbacks. Yeah, And and I guess my personal feeling would be that I think Anthony Richardson and Will Levis will probably never be good starters in the NFL. And Hennon right. Hooker, to me, feels like a guy who maybe it's a 50-50 shot. Like, I don't have a strong feeling on that. But to me, I have a I have a better feeling about him having a chance than I do Will Levis for sure and maybe Anthony hmm. Richardson. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like, hmm. do you do you view it, view it differently than I do? What I just laid no. out there. No, no, that's 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 the same. There's there's definitely a gap after one and two. Like for me, you you could convince me of Stroud over Bryce Young, like just because he's bigger. Like you could convince me. Like the gap, there's a gap for me, but it's not a huge gap. And then there's a large drop off. Yeah, a large drop off for me. Um, and, and I would rather trust my franchise with Hen and Hooker. I would like, that would be my guy. If I couldn't get Stroud or, or, or young, I'll go with Hen and Hooker, but you do have to understand that if, if Levis or Richardson makes it work in the right place, that's the kind of, that's the guy that can get you fired. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the guy that could be Patrick Mahomes in two years. Like he could, yep. like that's, that's the type of talent that, that they do have. So yeah, you need, I think you have to take that into account. I think it can be kind of tricky as a GM. Right. Okay. So for some college guys that I was wrong about the number one guy on the list, not, not in terms of like when this happened or whatever, but just the one that I was probably the most wrong about Stetson Bennett, <laughs> Georgia's quarterback who is now oh, a no. two time national champion. I did not see it. Um, <laughs> I just didn't see it. And I know we've talked about it at length on this podcast and I know he had incredible um, players oh. around him, had an incredible supporting cast about as good as you could hope for. But quite frankly, he balled out the last two years when it mattered. Yeah, and I did not see that coming. Um, I, I think I was probably more wrong about him than anybody else. Uh, 
I was right with you. I I was <laughs> very very upset that that guy got the nod to start. Mm-hmm. This was the beginning of last year, if you remember. JT Daniels was the starter two years ago for Georgia to start out the season against Clemson. He starts, he gets hurt, and we put Stetson in. I I never I didn't understand it. It made me very upset. It very upset because well, I had seen him a bit before. I had watched him even play high school ball. Like I've watched Stetson for a long time. He's, he's, yeah, he's born here in my town. Like I, I know who he is, was not a fan at all. Like, and I got better. Like, like it's okay to say that. Like he got so much better in his time there. And yeah, by the end of it, like the, in big games, Stetson Bennett outplayed big time quarterbacks. Like you look at the first rounders, he beat CJ Stroud. Head to head, he beat Henry Hooker twice, Will Levis twice, Richardson twice. He beat Bryce Young once, like, and he won two championships, like, and he beat those guys to do it. So, yeah, I it's okay to be wrong, I guess. Like, it is okay to be wrong, but man, that one I didn't see it coming. Just, yeah, couldn't have been more wrong there. So, switching over to Notre Dame, I, I, I have a few for Notre Dame in college that were. Uh, kind of on the, the other way where I thought they would be um, well, no, I have one that was ended up being a positive, a one that ended up being a negative. I'll start with the positive one. Harrison Smith, who has been an all pro safety in the NFL for a long time. Yeah. In 2009, Harrison Smith played linebacker on Charlie Weiss's last Notre Dame team and became the absolute poster child for missed tackles. <laughs> yeah. And we Notre Dame fans just, could not stand him. I I remember yelling at the TV over and over and over again because Harrison Smith once again was screwing up somehow. It came to the it was it was to the point where the offense could mess up, and we would jokingly blame it on Harrison Smith. That's how bad yeah. it was. The next year, Brian Kelly takes over as our coach. They move him to safety, and he has like seven interceptions, and eventually right. became a first round pick and and a long time Pro Bowl safety. Um, yeah. So that was a guy that I did not see him ever even getting close to drafted or even being a good starter in college. And he blew out all expectations that I had for him. I was completely wrong. Um, so that w- that's a positive story. Um, congrats right. to that guy. Um, the, the other side of the equation, um, the other Notre Dame player I'll mention is Brandon Wimbush. Um, and this is where falling in love with a high school recruit's tape (laughs) highlight tape i should say can be very dangerous brandon wimbush was a borderline five-star recruit um they flipped him from penn state and and just watching his high school highlights it was just ridiculous um throwing and running just a freak and you know the the problem is with a highlight tape you just see the good stuff right right and he had some good stuff in college for notre dame but you didn't see like the 55% completion percentage or whatever. And, and I just expected him to be like the Heisman contender type of quarterback. And he was always like kind of a placeholder type of quarterback where he could Hmm. run and you could trust him to complete about 50% of his passes. Um, Yeah. So I forgot. Yeah. I forgot a lot about Wimbush. He was the guy there. Yeah. I forgot. You guys were really jacked up about, about Wimbush for a while. Yeah, he was kind of your anti Stetson Bennett, highly highly recruited, <laughs> flashed a few things, but you just you just never got what you wanted out of him, um, and that's mm-hmm. probably because he had undue expectations because we saw the highlights and didn't focus as much on the rest of the tape, probably the way we sure. should have. Sure. What about what about some guys that are like in college now? Yeah, Notre Dame or otherwise. I, I had a couple of names just kind of off off the list. Recruits that come in, five star recruits. They they come in and and there's there's a lot there because we get to see these these recruits so much anymore. Before they actually get to college, you have like the the All American games, like the mm-hmm. the Under Armour game, the the Army game, and and you, they also have like the Elite Eleven for quarterbacks or like the opening. Like you get to watch a lot of these guys before they ever get get to college. Julian Fleming, the receiver for Ohio oh, State, yeah. um, the the five star. He's and and it's maybe a little unfair because the guys he's playing there with, but like I expected a lot more from him. He was he was um the one of the no he was he was the top receiver recruit um in his year. This is in 2020 when when he came out. Like he's just kind of he's been eh, 
he's been okay. Mm-hmm. He's been he's been just okay. And and yeah, maybe you expect him just to kind of get there and pop because simply all the, all the other receivers that they have there do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's there's a couple of names that you can look in there and find that guys that should be doing better than what they are. Sure. I the one that I thought of that's still in college is DJ Uyunglele, and I'm not ready mm-hmm. to stick a fork in him just yet. Like, I think he's got a chance to be really good for Oregon State. But this was a guy who was neck and neck with Bryce Young as as the top recruit in the country, yeah. and and the I should say this as well, not just based on him as a recruit, but based on the way he played against Notre Dame as a true freshman in twenty twenty. Sure. Notre yeah. Dame won the game, but DJU put up more passing yards in Notre Dame Stadium than any other opposing quarterback in history. Like mm-hmm. he looked like the absolute next great quarterback out of Clemson. Right, right after Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, DJ was supposed to be the next guy, and he was playing like it. And I remember talking to the Clemson fans after the game, like, well, looks like you guys got your next stud. Like, like it was just that obvious to me. And then the last couple of years, it just hasn't yeah. been that way. And yeah. I think a lot of the blame goes on Clemson's um, coaching staff. But he also did not play the way I expected him to. I was definitely wrong about what we would see from him the last couple of years. What about what about Quinn Ewers? Like, what's the what's the take on him? Because like he has transferred, um, goes yeah. So like the number one overall recruit, by the mm-hmm. way, um, in his year is at at Ohio State, and he sits right because he still technically should have been a senior in college, right? Like he's young. He, he went in early. I mean, sorry, a senior in high school. That like when he got to Ohio State, he was very young, and we knew that he wasn't going to start. Like it was kind of everyone kind of knew that. Like he's too young to start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But still having a full year of not getting any playing time, then you go to Texas for a year. And I mean, we can be honest, he had some games where he looked fantastic. The first half of the Alabama game, he looked great. And then the rest of the year, it was a lot of hit and miss. Like sometimes he was, and sometimes he absolutely was not. So you've got Arch Manning right in there behind him. Like, what are I just, once a guy starts transferring and bouncing from school to school, like a former five star, and yeah, he can keep on transferring because he was a former five star, but he's not actually that good. <laughs> like, yeah. like you know what I mean? Like, he never actually catches on. And so, for me, it's kind of a sign that when a quarterback keeps bouncing from school to school, like, well, he that means he's losing the job. Like, that means mm-hmm. he's not the guy. So, like, like what do you think like, of yours? Because I think he could get there to bust territory very quickly. Absolutely, it feels like he. There's a path for him to be Joe Burrow, and there's a path for him to be JT Daniels. Like. Yeah, the, the, it's or Tate Martell. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I definitely, I would, I would feel very much like he's in wait and see mode, or I'm in wait and see mode with him. I, I'm not ready to say one way or another what he is because I, I really don't know. Like, like you said, we did see some good things out of him. We also saw some bad, and it, yeah, to me, he's one of the quarterbacks to watch this upcoming season. He's also not somebody that I had a definitive opinion on. So I don't know that I can necessarily say that I was wrong one way or another because I just never had a very strong opinion on him one way or another, um, yeah, which is a little more mm-hmm. what I tried to focus on was players that stood out to me either as this guy is really good or this guy's really bad and or this guy's overrated maybe is a better way to put it and, mm-hmm. and where I was wrong on those. Two quarterbacks I'll mention, these last two, just two more guys on my list. These were both guys that I thought were – not all that great in college and turned out to be very good college players. The one guy you were completely on the opposite side of, you, you nailed this one. I did not. Joe Burrow, I thought was overrated as the LSU quarterback. He started two years there. The first year I was like, what is, what is the hype about? What? And then mm-hmm. before his second year, he was getting a lot, lots of, LSU was getting lots of hype about, well, I don't know that a lot of people were saying national title contender, but a lot of people had them in their top 10. You were maybe the exception. Like, you were very high on LSU. I was not. I did not expect that. Um, so props to you on that one. I was completely wrong about Joe Burrow. I did like that he was he was the number one pick. After I saw him play like that, I'm not surprised yeah. that he's a good NFL quarterback. I just did not see it going into that year. Joe Burrow made me a lot of money. I'll be yeah. honest. <laughs> 20, 2019 LSU made me a lot of money. Um, felt really good about, yeah, Burrow and, and just like that that team as a whole. But it it is a I, – I think certain players have a different like just mental makeup. And, mm-hmm. and cert, yeah, certain 
certain players from certain schemes do adapt better to the NFL. Like I, I think that's a fact. And there's there was there was no question that Burrow, especially yeah, like that the the last couple of games that he played um in college uh for Joe Burrow, like there was he was on a different level. Like he had already he was he was so far ahead of everyone else. By the way, like Trevor Lawrence is the guy that he beat. Trevor Lawrence is a fantastic pro as well. Like they sure. played in a championship game and, and it's not like Joe. Yeah. It's not like, like Trevor Lawrence was just a bum, but Burrow took himself just to a different stratosphere. Like he just started playing. Like it was just something else. Like he, it wasn't of this world, what he was doing in for those couple of games. Um, yeah. There's, do, do you, you say you have one more other than Burrow? Yeah. So the other one is Kenny Pickett. I think I referred to him at one point as basically the most, average not good not bad just the most average college quarterback you could imagine and then immediately the next season he had his his last year at Pitt where he he was like one of the best quarterbacks in college and was eventually the only first round quarterback in the NFL draft Um, so it's not like he was amazing like Heisman winner necessarily but he was pretty close and I had just called him like Basically, I was just saying he's the most average quarterback you could imagine. <laughs> he had a decent first year, rookie year in the NFL decent, as well. Yeah. Like it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, it wasn't fantastic, but definitely something to build on for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any takeaways just kind of from looking at your list of, of players you're wrong on? For me, like obviously most of them are quarterbacks just because those are probably the ones we have the most opinions about and sure. the ones that are the hardest to actually evaluate. Yeah, And I also, it was interesting to me, I had several college quarterbacks that ended up being a lot better than I expected. I only had like one really NFL quarterback that, that ended up being better than I, than I expected. It, it's almost like it's not unusual for a quarterback to take a big leap, but it usually happens in college, not, not yeah. as much in the NFL. Yeah. Um, those were kind of my takeaways. What, what did you take away from just looking at your list? If, if I was an NFL GM, like, we're just going to go ahead and like, if, if I was an NFL GM, I would draft a whole bunch of Alabama players and Georgia players. <laughs> like, and, and they do, they do bust just, like they do like there, there's a number of them that do bust, but like, say you're like the, the lions or the Browns, like we've kind of picked on them teams that haven't had success in a really long time. Right. Mm-hmm. And w- like, what do you have to lose by bringing these guys in, you already know that they're, they're used to winning. They bring a great culture along with them and they always have fantastic measurables. You know what I mean? Like Georgia players test just off the charts at at every single combine event. Right. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't, I don't understand why, like why you wouldn't just go draft a whole bunch of them. (laughs) Like, like let's just get every single Alabama player that we can possibly get because they do have a lot of success in the pros and Ohio State, another one. Like you could throw in like Ohio State. There's a lot of Ohio State players that do very, very well at the next level. So, like, or a Penn State defender. Like, you know, like Penn State has just good defense. Like, I would just pick like four schools and just like draft like only those guys because it feels like they bust just like a little less than everyone else. I do think that I don't know if I'd go quite to that extent, but I do feel like quarterback though would be kind of the exception. Sure. Um, yes. Correct. Agreed. Qu- quarterback feels like a lot more of a crapshoot to me. Um, yeah. And then you also like you'll still have your Trent Richardson, <laughs> like just out of the blue, and and uh, who was that offensive lineman Isaiah something from Georgia who was a first round Wilson. Pick? Isaiah, Isaiah Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Which is just like, but maybe those are the exception that kind of proves the rule. Like sure. typically, you take the the big hulking Georgia offensive lineman, you're going to be okay. The right. big beast. Alabama running back usually is going to work out. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think probably another lesson, and we've talked about this plenty, is quarterback is just really hard to figure out, man. Like it's just yeah. really hard. Yeah. No, I agree. You hear the uh the story from I think it was uh Jamarcus Russell when he got drafted by the Raiders. Um, they they gave him a playbook and I think they they taped like a twenty dollar bill to like the last page. And uh-huh. and like so he's like, Yeah, yeah, like you read the playbook, like, yeah, yeah, went cover to cover. And they're like, oh, did you see what was on the last page? He was like, yeah, I saw what was there. And they're then they like asked for the money. He like he didn't know there was money on the last page because <laughs> he, he hadn't read the playbook. Like some of it, some of it's not just measurables. Like sure. I think, especially like with quarterback, like there's so much, and and the decision making too is I think just crazy. I think decision making if you can get a guy that's a very quick 
like he just has an exceptional like release of the football and he makes like quick decisions. Mm-hmm. I think that translates the best. And I don't I don't know if you can really even quantify like <laughs> how quick someone's decision making is all the time. So yeah, it's I, Trevor Lawrence, not not surprised at all that he's having success. Justin Fields, maybe a little bit more surprised. Sure. Like, like they're both kind of the yeah, they both have fantastic arms. It was just I didn't, yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know that Fields would still be able to do that. I I'm a little surprised actually that Fields isn't better. I don't know if that's maybe you were thinking the opposite way. Yeah. I I'm shocked at how it seems like he lost accuracy in the NFL um, compared to what he was in college. And hmm. I still have hope, like, because, I mean, the Bears, clearly, they they just picked him over Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, who they could have had with the number one pick. They're choosing yeah. to believe in him. And I think they might have something there. Like, I, I really do think he might end up being pretty good. I don't so, know. But so he's going to be the first Ohio State quarterback to ever be any good in the NFL, pretty much, is what we're saying. Maybe, but I, I think that's such an overrated thing. Like, I, I just, especially at quarterback, mm. I mean, who's wh- Aaron Rodgers is from Cal and yeah. Jared Goff. Patrick Mahomes is from Texas Tech. And they, you know, who's the other good Texas Tech quarterback in the NFL? Like, <laughs> name, name him. Like, I, sure. I just feel like when it comes to quarterback, especially, yeah. Um, Focus more on the player and less on the school he came from, is my thought. Fair. Yeah, no, I agree. I, with with quarterbacks, you pretty much just draft as many as you can and just roll the dice. Um, yeah. and, then with, and then, like, with all your other players, your other 21 starters, you're trying to draft from, like, certain – a certain – from certain schools or, like, yeah, certain um, – yeah, certain profiles. So – I The way I view quarterback is you can never know what 100% – like with certainty that a guy will be a hit, but it does feel like you can eliminate guys as options. Like, uh, like okay. if you're smart, like, okay. So maybe, yeah, you, you probably would have, if you, if you eliminate based on what they did in college, you would have eliminated Josh Allen. Yeah. But he, again, I think he's the exception where most of the guys that were not good in college <laughs> If you eliminate them from first round consideration, you're improving your chances at least. There, um, Josh Allen's going to get a lot of NFL GMs fired, I think, yes. and it's because they're going to be trying to find the next one. Um, they're going to, yep. yeah, everyone's going to be trying to find the next, uh, the next gunslinger. Yeah, like him or Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, agreed. There's, there's, there's no exact science to it.